Good morning. You're welcome to our Bible teaching for this morning. May God bless you for joining us. I want to appreciate those that are joining us online too. May God bless you. We are the Apostolic Faith Church currently at Caffin Lee Park where we are having our annual camp meeting. If you live close by, you can come and join us. We are the postcode for Caffin Lee Park is SY16. 4AJ, and you'll be more than welcome to be in our midst. I want to appreciate the choir that has sung to us The Coming of the Lord by P. Choplin. Before that, we had the great violin quartet. They did a great job. May God bless them. Amen. So I tend to sing together from uh, Collected Gospel Songs, 494 and Brother Michael Ola B is our song leader for this morning. This song is Seeking the Lost. It's from Spoke 107. The orchestra have the music. 107. This will be introduced to us by the orchestra first, and then we will come in from the chorus. So we'll listen to the body from the orchestra, and then we will start to sing from the chorus and go to the first and second verses as we go along. So let's listen to the introduction from the orchestra now. Seeking the laws, one of seven. Very much, you've done so well. Maybe it's my leading that is not accurate. Okay, let's see from verse one now. Let's go seeking the lost. Seeking the lost, yeah. Oh, no. 
have a wonderful, grand choir here. Bless you, people of God. Let's take one chorus from our common CGS choruses, uh, number six. It is the old time religion. It is the whole time religion. Our fathers have been in it, they were blessed. And so we continue in the whole time religion after the tune. Two times. It is good enough for us. Yes. Okay, let's sing one for our children, this little light of mine. Yes. So that our children too who are here can join us. What do we want to have with our little light? Yes. To keep it shining. It's a chorus. So those of us who can just join us, please sing heartily with this. This little light of mine. Now let's go. This little light of mine. Go ahead, but I like to keep shining. Amen. Not only on the camp meeting time, but everywhere we go. Amen. Our song before we are uh, led in prayer is going to be Conquerors and Overcomer Now Our Way. Conquerors and Overcomer Now Our Way. Uh, we'll sing the last verse of this very one standing, after which we shall be led in prayer. That means. Um, that means, uh, that is four, uh, 505, CGS 505. Okay, that means we are singing all the fastest sitting down except the last verse. And that last verse that we are singing, singing standing, uh, we will request the orchestra to join us, who is going to be a cappella, they are not playing, including the pianists. We will rise up and sing it without any music support, and at the end of which we will remain standing, those who can stand anyway, and then we shall be led in prayer. Let's listen to the tune, 505 CGS, Concord and Overcomer. We sing it meticulously, not too fast, not too slow. Concord and Overcomer.
Und in der Auferkommen schau mich in ihn. Er dreht und hebt in meiner Sendung. standing, we call upon Sister Nike Ademi to come and pray for us. Heavenly Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you because we are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus. We thank you for all the blessings we have received this camp meeting. We thank you for the way you have ministered unto us through the choir, through the ministers, all our heavy, all our ushers, our security, our kitchen staff. We give you all the glory. We exalt your holy name as we continue today. Continue with us. Holy Spirit, we know you are here already. Take absolute control. Oh, Lord, bless us beyond measure. That at the end of the service, we'll come and give you glory. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we are welcome to this service. May God bless you. Um, the announcements we have for this morning. Um, since we are getting close to the end of our camp meeting, uh, departure announcement will be posted on the notice board. Please take time to read um, and make sure you try to implement what's on that notice. It helps with all the conclusion of our camp meeting and what is expected of us and where we are living. Today, for our lunch and dinner is the 10 of our PECAM, Denmark, Ireland, uh, and Zimbabwe Saints to help in the dining hall. We'll be having a youth service at uh, 3 p.m. this afternoon, and then revival and evangelistic service in the evening at 8. We will be having water baptism, as we have always been announcing, and would want those who have been saved from their life of sin to register. Whether you were saved at this camp meeting or before, please do register with the camp office if you want to be water baptized. We will continue our service with the first special. Heaven came down. Sorry, it's uh, the king is coming by... Are molding. That's what the choir is going to sing for us. And then after that, we have testimonies. 90 seconds, just one and a half minutes. When you go beyond that, the organist will start playing softly, just to give you probably th three or four seconds to wrap up. And then after that, someone else will have their turn. We will have uh, the last special, which is I am on the battle. Field for my Lord by our youth and Brother Solomon Akal from uh, Denmark will be singing for us. And then we'll have the Bible teaching, which is going to be given to us by uh, Brother Shola. Amen.
more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent. No more time to have a sweet. Busy housewives cease their labels in the courtroom. No debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the king comes through the gate. Happy faces line the hallways. Those whose lives have been redeemed. Broken homes that he has mended. Those from prison he has freed. Little children and the aged, hand in hand, stand all aglow. Who were crippled, broken, ruined, clad in garments white as snow. I can hear the chariots rumble. I can see the marching throng. The glory of God's trumpet spell the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are now unfolding. Heaven's grand cells all in place. Heaven's choir is now assembling. Start to sing amazing grace. Ooh, the King is coming. The King is coming. I can hear the trumpet sounding. And now his face I see. Ooh, the King is coming. The King. to thank God this, uh, this morning because there is power in the blood of Jesus to save. I thank God on the 10th of October 1976, the Lord came into my life. Since then, I've been enjoying daily miracles for almost 48 years. To God be the glory. I thank God for what he did for me lately. I went on a trip to North America I thank God for Johnny Messis. While I was there, I got a message that uh, we need to appear in the court. We've been facing that issue for some time, but I didn't know that the court appearance would be while I will not be in the UK. I was not feeling okay at all. I did the little preparation I could do, and uh, it was about motoring offense with my son. The way God intervened, is far beyond my expectation. Amen. Few days before the court appearance, the solicitor wrote me that we don't need to go to court again. Amen. The insurance company will liaise with the court, and that was the end of the case. Amen. I couldn't believe my eyes, but I know our God can do the impossible. Amen. I give him the balance of my life. baptized me with Holy Ghost and Fire. Two decades ago, I came into the UK to study. You know, it was a crossroad moment in my life. You know, devil was there beckoning on me, but I thank God Jesus was there too. And I decided to follow Jesus. You know, 20 years down the line, I can tell you today with the two corners of my mouth that it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. 
2008, on this camp ground, I met my wife, my beautiful wife, and the rest is history. You know, 2010 and 2016, God gave us Theophilus and Gabriel, and God is answering our prayers on them. 2011, I completed my PhD miraculously. Amen. I had no money to pay, but the school paid my money, and they even paid me too. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. 2014, I started a job. I had no passport. My passport was with the home office. The person to vet the passport went on holiday, and the person did not return until a day after home office gave back my passport to me. It was only God that can work out the timing. And even last month, we were told that 2,000 people will be left in the organization. But I thank God, God preserved my job. Amen. What God has done for me, I cannot tell it all. I pray I see him in heaven at last. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. And forget not his benefit. Amen. I thank God for saving my soul, Amen. for the sanctification and the infilling of the Holy Ghost and fire. Why I stand up this morning to testify to the power of God in my life and family is that there was a time that it was prophesied that my wife would not live to celebrate her 38th birthday. We, in prayer and faith, held on to the hem of Jesus' garment. And God, in his power, helped us. My wife celebrated 38th birthday. Later on, she turned 35. Amen. She was 38. Amen. She celebrated 39. Amen. And today, God in his power Amen. has added another year to her years. Amen. I praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Though my wife passed through a lot, she walked through the valley of shadow of death. The devil came as a flood, but God raised his standard Amen. and gave up victory. His name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul, sanctification, baptism of Holy Ghost. I want to thank God for the power to keep, to uphold. I want to thank God for the victory in the blood of Jesus. I want to thank Jesus for loading my life with benefit every day. I want to thank God especially what he did for us year before the last. We were not here last year camp meeting. While we were towards the end of the camp meeting, we got a distress call, a very disheartening call. It was so bad. You know, because of my husband's condition, where we used to receive call there by the car park, he came back into the church with my daughter. You know, as I was there, I, the, the Spirit of God led the Psalm 121 into my heart. I read the Psalm. I will look unto the hills where cometh my help. Truly, my help comes from the Lord. Amen. While the prayer was going on, going on, you know, after a while, I noticed someone walking just close to me. After the prayer, Sister Suzanne, God bless you, man. She came to me. That was the first time I will have contact with this woman. She held me. We pray. We cried together that God has done it. And truly, God did it. Amen. We have prayer answering God. Yes. Within a short time, we got the call back that God has turned the situation. Amen. The boy that it will have been disaster, God brought him back. Amen. God is so good. I know he's working. He never stopped working. He is working. He will continue to work until I see him in glory. Glory be to his name. I'm so thankful tonight. I'm so thankful this afternoon to say to just be to appreciate God. I'm so thankful because uh, at a point in my life I didn't want to get saved, but the Lord saved my soul in a very miraculous manner. The Lord saved me, sanctified me, filled me with the Holy Ghost and power. I just wanted to give thanks to God today because for the past two months, it has been a really health struggle for me. I have been really, really sick for instance, like May. It has been continuous. But I just want to thank God because there is the God that still answers prayer. You know, I came to this camp meeting and I was thinking, you know, I had to take time off work to come to, to camp for a few days. And I kept thinking, Will I, am I going to continue to be sick? And, you know, on, on Wednesday night, I was really, really down. 
I know two my ministers came up, they laid hands on me, they, and with the, with, the, with, the, with the power of God, and they anointed me with oil. And you know, I woke up yesterday morning, and I was strong. Yeah. I was able to come to service in the evening. If you see me on Wednesday night, and if you see me on Thursday night, it's what I was a complete different person. And this is what God can do. And for the past, I've been dealing with this particular issue for a few months, and I woke up yesterday, and it's totally disappeared. Yeah. And that is what God can do. And I just want to thank God. I just want to give him the balance of my life. Please pray for my strength in the Lord. I thank God for this wonderful gospel. I, I accepted the gospel when I was just a teenager. And I did not know what to do about my life. And when he saved my soul, he gave me the direct path. That I am going to work for him. How is that going to happen? I do not know. I had no good education then. Because I had no money to train myself. But Jesus trained me. Yeah. When I came into this UK, I was just to study and go back. But God made me realize that I have to remain. And you know what? When I get my first job in Bristol, and there was no church there, God made me to know that we are the church. The building is just a building. With two or three family, we started in Bristol, which we call Bristol Cardiff. And now, we have a church. Amen. I want to say I thank God I have a footprint in the United Kingdom. Because this church has just started. Yeah. And we are going to expand. Yeah. When I came to the headquarters in Bexley, before we joined the choir, there were just about eight. And I was wondering, headquarters, no choir member. But lady to put my heart to start training people for music. Yeah. And now nationally, yeah. we have a good number of choir. Yeah. I have just started to do work for God. Please pray with me that the devil will not stop me. Amen. I want to do his work. Amen. It makes me happy. Amen. That is my primary purpose in life. Amen. Thank you very much. I thank God for the power in the blood of Jesus. I thank God for the three Christian experiences. I thank God for what God is doing in my life. Yeah, my, my little boy just came to me in the kitchen when I was cooking. He was standing by me. And suddenly he shouted, Mommy, and fell on the floor. I look at it, I look around, I say, What is going on? And I expected him to stand up. He couldn't stand up. The two legs were vib vibrating very seriously. I carried him, I tried to stand him up. He couldn't stand. And I was shouting, The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I took him, I took him to my husband, I called on my husband, and we put him on the bed. All of us, we, we knelt beside the bed and we were shouting, Jesus, help us. We were praying and uh, the, the, the leg was still vibrating on the bed. We tried to stand him up again. He couldn't stand. So as we were just praying, and I said, okay, let's, after the prayer, we called the uh, GP. They said we should bring him. We took him there. When he got there, they stood him up. He stood up and he was walking. They said nothing happened to this boy that we should take him back home. That nothing happened to him. When, when we got back home, he, he fell again. And he could not stand up. And I said, this is not ordinary. I said, our God will help us. We started praying. And we prayed. And do you know that Jesus answered our prayer? He now stood up from bed and jumped down. And this boy started walking. This le the legs, he's using the leg to play football and to run around for Jesus. Not all that, not only that. Um, the two that are standing testify and then we have this special song. I want to thank God for everything God has done for me. Um, I want to thank God for his patience in my life. Um, at the start of the year, um, I had difficulty with my Christian walk with God. I felt like my Christian walk with God was paused. Um, God wanted me to do something that I was very scared of doing. He wanted me to make restitution and I was very worried about doing it. I had a lot of time to do it but because of fear I couldn't do so. I want to thank God because God helped me in Portland and in the youth camp to make that restitution. Um, and last night, after the youth service and after our evening service, I want to thank God that God renewed my salvation. Amen. And God also sanctified me last night. Amen. I want to continue to walk with God and I want to pray that before the end of this camp, I get my baptism. Amen. Please continue to pray for me. Je veux remercier Dieu pour tout ce qu'il a fait pour moi. 
On va le remercier parce que c'est un Dieu qui m'a aimé depuis que je suis tout petit. Il m'a fait connaître ce glorieux évangile et pour ça, je voudrais le remercier. Je voudrais le remercier parce qu'il m'a sauvé dès que j'avais 5 ans. Il m'a fait grâce, il m'a fait miséricorde et pour ça, je voudrais le glorifier. Il m'a sanctifié également lorsque j'ai grandi. Il m'a fait avoir mon baptême d'eau à Portland, Oregon. Il m'a béni, il m'a fait grandir également, recevoir mon baptême du Saint-Esprit. Et je voudrais le remercier pour cela. La Bible dit, cherchez premièrement le royaume des cieux et sa justice et il donnera toutes choses. Il a fait beaucoup de choses pour moi, que ce soit mon mariage, que ce soit mon enfant, que ce soit ma famille, que ce soit mon travail, tout ce qu'il a fait pour moi, je voudrais le remercier pour tout. Priez pour moi pour qu'à la fin de toutes choses, je sois avec lui au ciel et que je puisse le glorifier éternellement. I want to thank God for his grace and his mercy. I want to thank him because from the age of five years old, I was saved. Later on, I got sanctified and I was baptized of water. I got my baptisms of water in Portland, Oregon. Then later on, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. God gave me a wife and a child in this gospel. And he has been with me. He has been protecting us. And I want you to pray for us because I want to work for him till the end of my life. alone and idle I was a sinner too I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do I took the master's hand and I joined the Christian bound I'm on the battlefield for my Lord I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land the grace of God upon me the Bible in my hand in distant land I trod crying sinner come to God I'm on the battlefield for my Lord I am on the battlefield Field for my Lord, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord, and I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. When I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit and honed me as his child. Around the throne of grace, he appoints my soul a place. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. If you try and fail in your trying and sore and scared from the work you be gone, take up your cross, run quickly to meet him. He'll on the stand and say, well done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life and the battle is one carrying the staff 
and the cross of redemption. He'll understand and say, Well done, are you on the battlefield for your Lord? Are you on the battlefield for your Lord? Have you promised him that you would serve him till you die? Are you on the battlefield for your Lord? For I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I have promised him that I would serve him till I die. Feed for my Lord, for my Lord. May God help us to serve Him till we die. Take a text this morning from First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter nine, verses twenty-four to twenty-seven. First Corinthians nine, twenty-four. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiver the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. 27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We thank God for this wonderful camp meeting. We thank God for many, many blessings that God has poured out on us. We have certainly enjoyed being in the presence of the great God of heaven. And we have also enjoyed all the fellowship that we have had with you all. Thank you for your prayers for us. We continue to pray for you. This morning, with the Lord's help, our last Bible teaching of 2024, Western Europe camp meeting, we focus on an endurance race to the end. An endurance race to the end. You know, the Bible is full of images that help us understand the Christian life or the Christian journey. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That is an image that the Bible presents to us that uh, we are soldiers of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, we are members of the body of Christ. We are members. We understand the body, at the hand, the leg, and all parts of the body. We are part of something bigger. Yes. Like I always tell the saints in Pullman, you come and see us. We might be 80 some mornings. We might be 90. We might be 70. We might be 100 some other days. But that is not all of us. We are part of something bigger. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says we are ambassadors for Christ. We are Christ's envoys. 
representatives in this world. We understand ambassadors. Ephesians 2.22 says, In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God. God is building us to be like Christ. To be more like Christ. We are a building. We are seated in a building this morning. We all understand the image of a building. John 15.5 says, He is the vine. And we are the branches. We know uh, vines. We know branches. Second Corinthians 11.2 says, We are the bride of Christ. If anyone has gotten married here, you understand what it means to, to have a bride. Even those who are not married, they are looking forward to having their brides. We understand it. And uh, Matthew 5, 13 and 14, Jesus said, Ye are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. These analogies are very rich and powerful in helping us better understand our Christian journey. You know what? God, Jesus is a wonderful Lord. He explains things very clearly to us. You do not have to have, uh, be a professor or be a PhD holder to understand the simplicity of this wonderful gospel. You know what? I see people, uh, and I've seen many, even growing up in, in, in Antony, in Lagos, in Nigeria, I saw many who could neither read nor write. And uh, when they get into the presence of the living God, I saw them uh, get their experiences. I saw them uh, get saved, get sanctified, and they start speaking in tongue. And some of them who had never, uh, even could never even read or write, they are speaking impeccable English. You know what? This gospel is wonderful. Perhaps one of Paul's favorite analogies was comparing the Christian life to running a race. Paul uses the running uh, uh, race image at least nine times in his epistles. With God's help, we will explore these verses during this Bible teaching this morning. But we will spend more time in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, which I just read now, as well as Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Specifically, with the Lord's help, we will cover the following questions during this Bible teaching. What is a Christian race? What are the similarities between a physical race and a spiritual Christian race? What are the differences Number four, what would Christians endure before we end this race? And number five, what are the benefits of running the Christian race to the end? So let's quickly go to number one, what is a Christian race? The word race is from the Greek word agonia, which is translated to the word agony in English. In other words, the Christian race demands great diligence, discipline, and perseverance. A Christian race is not a, rose, a, a walk in the park. The Christian race is not rosy and cozy all the time. The Christian race, like that word says, agony. Sometimes on this journey from earth to heaven, we go through different things. And many of, uh, of us have testified, even during this camp meeting, some of the things that we went through. Some through the fire, some through the flood. But aren't we glad that we all go through the blood of Jesus? <laughs> you know, uh, no wonder a church motto is earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. It to contend means to fight for it. This, this race, this journey, it's, again, is not a stroll in the park. We, we must have a determination to go all the way. We must have a determination to fight to the last. We must have a determination never to drop out. Remember that a winner does not quit, and a quitter does not win. You cannot quit this race and be a winner. By the grace of God, we will run this race to the finish line. You know, the image of running is full of vivid parallels with our Christian work. The Corinthians that Paul was writing here, they knew what Paul was talking about. They understood the Hellenistic culture of those days. They were familiar with the Greek games, 
both in Olympics and Ishmael games. In fact, the Corinthians, they had history book tells us that they had lots of stadiums. They, 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 they were familiar. So Paul was bringing an image that, that they were familiar with to them. Paul was not talking beyond. Uh, Paul was also a philosopher. He could be talking calculus or uh, algebra. No, 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 no. The gospel is simple. Amen. There's nobody who has come to this camp meeting who has not understood the message of salvation, the message of repentance. You must be born again. You have to be saved. We all can understand that. So Paul brought to them an image that was closer to them. In fact, uh, I don't think this is a coincidence. God uh, has it uh, all planned out. The 2024 Olympics would officially start in Paris tonight. Where 206 nations will bring 10,714 athletes to compete in 32 sports, including track events. It, is, it starts tonight. And just this morning, God is uh, bringing a message about race yes. to us. <laughs> so it is not, it, God has all this planned out. Yes. Yeah, so we will make a lot of analogy. And I know many of our young people are already thinking, oh, they can't get uh, uh, past uh, evening service and go watch the opening of the Olympics. Uh, but before you do that, uh, you better watch God in action. <laughs> God will be in action this morning. You know, in our text, Paul compared uh, the Christian life to a race. A Christian race is not a 100-meter dash. It is not a 200-meter dash. A Christian race is likened to a marathon. It's a race of a lifetime. You do not need to sprint so hard and burn yourself out in, in one year or in two years or in one month or in two months. By the grace of God, you pace yourself. Uh, or you ask God to pace you. That is what it means to run a marathon. You know, a physical marathon is 26.219 miles long. That is way longer than a 100-meter sprint race. Now, many physical races, when they start, the runner hear the phrase, on your mark, set, go. In the spiritual world too, the spiritual Christian race, it also has a start. You know, John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. To be born again is to be saved from sin. And Ephesians 2.8, Ephesians 2.8 tells us that we are saved by grace through faith. If you read Romans 10, 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, he said thou shalt be saved. That is the start of a spiritual Christian race. It starts as salvation. It, even before salvation, it precedes with the first teaching we had, repentance. You need to repent of your sin. And it's a wonderful race. And we will tell you the benefits of that race before we finish. But you must start. If there's anyone here who has not started, this morning is a good time to start. May God help you to start this race. You know, salvation from sin is wonderful. When a sinner sent a simple prayer to heaven, it doesn't have to be a garnished prayer. It doesn't have to be a decorated prayer. But it must be a sinner's prayer. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. You know, what? Well, God have mercy. I always tell the saint in Pullman, if you don't have any prayer request to pray, just say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. In fact, even if you are saved or sanctified or baptized uh, many, many times over, you still need the Lord's mercy. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? What a wonderful prayer for a sinner to say, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. You know, the host of heaven will, 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 will open up. God will hear from heaven. God will send help down to you. The Spirit of God will bear witness with your spirit that you are now a child of God. Oh, you have started. You have started that race. With salvation, you will start. You know, you must start at Calvary. That is where we all start. I remember Brother Nolan Roby 
uh, uh, one of our veterans in Portland, he told us that uh, we must always get to Calvary in anything we do in the house of the Lord. Whether you preach, or in fact, he said he take the shortest cut to Calvary. And when you get to Calvary, leave people there. Don't take them away from Calvary. When you testify, take the shortest call to Calvary. That is why, Brother Mark, who announced, get to the main thing. The main thing is salvation. The main thing is Calvary. That you are saved. You are delivered. Glory be to God. You know, salvation is wonderful. I can go on and on for the whole day to talk about uh, what great salvation. I love how Paul says it. He says, this great salvation. I love that adjective, great. It is not ordinary. Salvation is wonderful. You know, in our midst this morning, we have many who have been running this race and enduring for many years. Many, many years. Uh, we also have some who have just started this race during this committee. Yes. By the grace of God, we are all on the same team. Yes. Whether you've started many years ago, I remember Brother Hell Phillips, he reminded me that he and Sister Sylvia got saved on the same night, March 21, 1948. That is over 76 years ago. I still saw Brother Phillips in Portland during this committee. Yes. He is still running. And he, Brother Ayal said, in fact, he did so many things uh, before committee so that he could attend services. Uh, uh, you know, if you know him, any time the church door was opened, he was always there with his wife. They are still running. You never get to a point in this race where you say, no, I have reached a point. I'm not the boss. No, you keep running until you cross the finish line. May God help us to keep running. You know, the, the race is not like a sprint. It doesn't end in a few minutes. It's a race of a lifetime. Sometimes on the mountain. Other times in the valley. But that song says, in shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow. But God will give a song. <laughs> <laughs> on this race in great sorrow God will give you a song and he says in the night season and all that day long did God not give Paul the apostle and Silas did he not give them a song he gave them a song a song in the night this new year, spiritual year as you go on this race during times of sickness during times of problems ask God, God give me a song give me a verse <laughs> The Lord will bless you. <laughs> you know, we go through different seasons of life. It does not matter. As you take God with you on that race, he will see you through. He will see you through. I love that song. The song so many songs in the night. It says, through the love of Christ our Savior. <laughs> oh, we be well. Another song in the night. We have an echo that keeps the soul steadfast and sure. Why the billows rule? Oh, to the rock which cannot move. There, there's that song fastened to the rock which cannot move. It says, grounded, firm, and deep. <laughs> grounded, firm, and deep. Not in my professorial work. Grounded, firm, and deep. In the Savior's love. <laughs> Those who are not on this spiritual race, you are missing out. Because God takes us along. He picks us when the battle is hard. God takes us and puts us on his shoulder. And he works with us. When we can no longer walk, the Lord will bless you. This is a wonderful race. It's a race of a lifetime. Oh, come along with us. The Lord will do you good. What are the similarities between this race and the spiritual uh, Christian race? Very quickly, both require preparation to qualify, to run the race, and they both have starting, I talked about starting and finishing lines. You know, a careful runner must make preparations. The same is true in a spiritual race as well. We need to make preparations. 
We need to, consecrations have to be poured out. I told you uh, before, uh, about two years ago, uh, the Lord started to deal with my heart. I told my wife, I said, God is calling something out of my life. I don't know. We began to pray. I started to put everything on the altar. You know what? If you want to run this race to the very end, there may be things that God will put his finger on your life. There will be things that, he says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. They may be lawful. Everybody might do it, but God may say, no, not you. You are consecrated. I have laid my hand on you. I have a job for you. I have something for you. You must be willing to lay it on the altar. And when you lay it on the altar, oh, what a blessing. So it's a race of consecration. We start at salvation, but we continue with consecration to the very end. They both are finishing lines. The finish line, you know, we say on your marks, I go, and then they, when they cross that finish line in the, in the world, our finish line is heaven. Yeah. Our finish line is heaven. Yeah. And this race is not so much about, oh, I have to be fast to get there. I, I just run. If you can run like this, run. If you can take it like this. Just continue to run. Let the one who is running like this never blame the one who is like this. Just run. (laughs) We just run. You know, I love the story of John Stephen Aquari. That man represented Tanzania at the 1968 Olympic marathon race. He started the race very well, but then somewhere in the race, that marathon race, he got injured. Many thought he would pull out of the marathon. Instead, John Stephen Aquari received medical attention while on the ground. He returned to the track to continue the race. His pace was now much lower, slower, but his resolve to complete the race remained intact. 18 of the 75 of those who started mar- that marathon race, they had pulled out more than an hour after the winner had been declared. Many had left the stadium. The medal had been given. John Stephen Aquari crossed the finish line in the last place. The medals, again, had been given. By the time he reached the stadium, he was limping, and the bandage around his leg was flapping in the breeze. He was asked, why did you continue running when it seemed there was no point in doing so? His response has gone down in sporting history. John said, my country, Tanzania, did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. Folks, God has not sent us here to just start this race. God has sent us from heaven. To finish and by the grace of God finish we will God we help all of us to cross that finish line he wants us to finish you know what nobody will know you started if you did not finish but when you finished well everybody will know you have started may God help us to finish well both physical and spiritual races require consistency. Yeah. Uh, there was another man named Frank Schroeder, first American in 64 years to win a gold medal at the 1972 Olympic Marathon in Munich. Uh, that was then in West, Western Germany. we all been together now called Germany. After Frank had won the Olympic Marathon, it was reported that Frank had practiced running every single day for seven years. He never missed training one day in seven years. To be a great runner, one has to train consistently. You know, one coach puts it this way. A runner may say, surely to miss training just this once will not matter. After all, there's a long season of training ahead. But to miss training once is to open a breach in the wall of routine. And a single breach will almost certainly be followed by other breaches to the point that there is no routine left. 
it, people may think that it's routine for us. We come to church Sunday morning. We come to church Sunday evening. You are there Wednesday. You are there Friday. You say, it doesn't mean this is a routine. This coach was saying that when you learn to breach one routine, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. A Bible study it no longer matters. <laughs> Prayer meeting no longer matters. Music practice, no, I can't. Let me, they say, uh, you can work a double shift. You go and work triple shift. You make money. And it entered into leaking pockets. <laughs> you know what? But when you have a purpose that I want to run this race to the finish line. <laughs> God, I want to run this race to the finish line. The things of this world. I, I always like to give an analogy. I like to fly a lot. When you fly, you, your plane is seated on the tarmac. You see all the big, big houses. And then when they are still, the plane is still taking off. You see the airport, all the big, big cars, the Lexus, the Rolls Royce. They look big, the things of this world. But the further you go, the further you go, when you now reach 30,000 feet above the sea level, those mansions, they look like a dot. Those big, big vehicles, they look like a dot. Ah, will you ask God this money to take you higher? Yeah. <laughs> to take me higher. Yeah. So that the things of this earth, like that songwriter says, will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory <laughs> and his grace. That is what God can do for you when you have a purpose to run this race. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. That is the meaning of consistency. To be steadfast. Unmovable. You are just unmovable. You are steady. You are stable. They saw you here in 1975. You are still there in 1980. You might not be a minister. You might not be a DC superintendent. You might not be, a, but you are faithful. They saw you in 1985. They come in 1990. You are there in 2005. You are just steady. He said, my, my beloved brethren, be that steady, unmovable, always abandoned in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that our labor, your labor, <laughs> your labor, <laughs> our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast. I love it. Hold it fast. The profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. Yes. We must be consistent. We want to be consistent in reading the Bible. Consistent in praying. Consistent in church attendance. Consistent in the house of the Lord. Some people will say, oh no, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about consistency. I can sing. Uh, sometimes uh, we sing that song. Hallelujah anyhow. Praise God anyhow. And sometimes I say, I don't want to praise God anyhow. I don't want to serve God anyhow. I want to serve God in the beauty of his holiness. <laughs> you want to serve God in his beauty of his holiness. You know, someone said that uh, God tapped on Enoch. Enoch uh, Genesis 5, 24 says, And Enoch walked with God, and it was not, for God took him away. Someone said, God knocked on Enoch's door in the morning. I said, Enoch, let's go on a walk. And Enoch and God were going. The whole day, they went on a walk. And in the evening, God told Enoch, Enoch, we have gone so far. Do you want to go back home? Enoch said, no. I've gone too far to go back. And God said, okay, let's go to heaven. So the Bible says God took him away. He just, they just entered heaven. Ah, yeah. oh, wonderful. Amen. You know what? You and I must determine yes. that we have got, come this far yes. that nothing Amen. by the grace of God yes. will make us go back. Yes. Brother Darrell would normally tell us what Brother Carver told them, that he who will not be discouraged will not be discouraged. You must tell God this morning. Ah, I refuse the devil. The devil wants to discourage me, but I refuse to be discouraged. Yeah. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. <laughs> you need to encourage yourself in the Lord this morning. You need that to run to the finish line. 
You need that. That song says, oh, master, let me walk with thee in lowly parts of service free. Tell me thy secret. You know, you can get to the secret of God in the closet in prayer. This is not, you just lose control. This is not about somebody is, somebody is listening to my prayer. You just mean business with God. He says, in the, in, the, in the secret, tell me thy secret. Help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. You must be consistent. Both physical and spiritual races, consistency also requires discipline. Yes. Discipline. Yes. It says in, uh, there in 1 Corinthians 9, uh, 27, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You keep under your body. Bring it to subjection. This flesh can kill. It can destroy you. It can destroy me. How do we keep it under our body? Daily prayers. Daily consecration. Mortifying this flesh in prayer. Daily reading the word of God. Asking the Lord to, 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 to use his blood to wash us clean every day. Colossians 3, 5 says, Mortify, mortify or subdue, therefore your members. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 to 8 1 Timothy 4, 7 to 8 says, Exercise therefore rather unto godliness. Exercise yourself. It is not just only uh, exercise to keep uh, uh, your tummy under control. Exercise yourself to godliness. Yes. And 2 Timothy 2, 22 says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, Charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. A Christian runner needs to live a disciplined life. There is food they will not eat. There are desserts they will not take because they are disciplined. They, they keep under their body. They train their body. You know, Christians, there must be food that we cannot eat. You just don't eat, read any kind of books. You just don't listen to any kind of preacher. You, you, you must discipline yourself. Yes. You, you must say, God, come and help me. Yes. You know, with this word, you will never go wrong. Yes. You read this word, it will energize you. Yes. It will give you stamina. Yes. It will give you strength. Yes. 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 Says that Second uh, Timothy 2, 4 says, No man that worries entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who are choosing him to be a soldier. You know entanglement. Weight can constitute entanglement. An endurance race is hard enough in itself when you are running. You, you need to run it light. It is far harder and almost always impossible to run to the finish line when you have extra luggage on yourself. There was a time something happened with some people and uh, even people were not involved. They were getting into it. They were entangling themselves. I prayed a prayer. I said, God, let them not remember me. I don't even want to be part of it. God just took me apart. That whole problem went away. The thing that does not concern you, you entangle yourself. You want to know Sister A's problem, Brother B's problem. You want to know all the problems that uh, people have against the church leaders. And the church leaders have against you. It's entanglement. Take them away. Say, Lord, separate me. Separate me for the purpose uh, to run this race to the finish line. We must not have entanglement. Galatians 5, 7 says, what doth hinder you? What is it that is hindering you? This morning, all hindrances, may God take them away. And physical and spiritual races, we must focus on the goal. We must focus on the goal. Uh, you look, the Hebrews 12 says, 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus. That is our good lead, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, even Jesus, because of the joy that was set before him, the Bible says, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. So you and I, we had in one of the teachings, we must keep the end goal in sight. Amen. Our end goal is heaven. Yeah. When uh, things happen, rather than say, I will just go away. Where are you going? 
Don't you, do, where you are going, that other place you are going, do they not have people there? Brother Dare once told us, he said, you want a perfect church, uh, you should be the only one in that church. The moment you bring your wife there, it becomes imperfect. When you bring your children there, ah, it's even more imperfect. And then you start inviting other people who are different than you, who speak different than you, who love things that are different than you. It becomes even more imperfect. You are looking for a perfect church. Where will you get it? Oh, they did this to me. Let me go away. Ah, may we never go away. Yeah. What are the differences between physical race and spiritual race? Very quickly, physical races are run swiftly. Fast, fast, fast. Spiritual races, they require patience. Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews 12, 1 says, And let us run with patience. The race that is set before us, you know, in this race, <laughs> the, 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 this uh, physical race, you have to be fast. Because the first one that gets to the finish line wins the medal, the gold. This one, all of us. As long as you and I cross the finish line, we are all winners. Nobody is a loser here. We are all winners. And by the grace of God, we will win. Ecclesiastes 9, 11 says the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. You don't have to be the fastest. And then again, again, if you read 1 Corinthians 9, 24, it says, uh, know ye that they which run in the world, but one received the prize. That is the race of this world. At most, three, gold, silver, and bronze. Finish. But you know this race? Almost 500 of us here at this committee, by the grace of God. Yeah. All of us, five, four, if I 500 years, we will be winners. Yeah. Physical race is about competition. You want to beat the other party. But spiritual race is about unity. Yeah. Collaboration. Yeah. Unity of the spirit. Yeah. In fact, Paul said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Yeah. To endeavor is not a simple task. You have to work at it. Yeah. What should make you flare up? You say, ah, Jesus, cover me with your blood. Yeah. Ah, I want unity in my church. Yeah. Uh, because of that, uh, you, don't, you don't go there. Uh, when they are saying that, uh, they are talking ill of someone, ah, no, 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 no. Just separate me apart. <laughs> uh, because you are endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. If you know someone offends you, you go and meet that person. You don't go and tell the third party. What are you doing there? You are endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. This is not about competition. This is about cooperation. Yes. Ephesians 4, 13 says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is what God is calling us to. Number four, what will Christian endure? I will just briefly go through points number four and five. What will Christian endure before they cross that finish line and end the race? The word endure appears 28 times in the Bible. And they all have to do with what Christians will endure before they get to heaven. Don't let this is not a bread and butter gospel. <laughs> it is not a, uh, uh, this battle of life it is not rosy and cozy but Lord we, 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 one thing we are sure of, we are sure of victory yeah. but no matter what you go through you, God will help you to be victorious 2 yeah. Timothy, Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 says thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ so you will need to endure hardness. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5 says, But watch thou in all things, endure affliction. Sometimes we may need to endure affliction. Affliction in our body. Affliction in, in different parts. We may need to endure that on, the, on this race to heaven. 1 Peter 2, 19 says, For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief. Sometimes we endure grief. Hebrews 12, 7 says, We endure chastening. Chastening of the Lord. And sometimes a message will come and will chasten us. Don't say, ah, why, why are they talking to me? 
ah, nobody, you know what? I like to get away as much as possible. I don't like to know much about people. So that I can preach freely. So that nobody will say, ah, it was what I discussed. Because the moment you discuss it with us, we cannot bring it to the platform. So, but when you hear it on the platform, God may be chastening you. God may be chiseling you. Don't blame the preacher. Just fall on the Lord. That is part of running. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 10 says, endure all things. You might need to endure all things. We might need to endure all things. Because uh, 1 Peter 1 4, 1 Peter 1 4 says, uh, uh, We have an inheritance that is incorruptible, that is undefiled, that faded not away, reserved in heaven for us. You know, it's similar to where we read in 1 Corinthians 9 25. It, it says that uh, it talks about incorruptible. It says the people in this world, the, 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 the prices, the gold they win is corruptible. That gold over sometimes it fades away. I remember a football player here who won something and uh, uh, was keeping it uh, in his home in, in, in London, and thieves came and, and took them away. Up to today, he has not been able to recover his medal. But you know, this, uh, 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 this reward in heaven nobody, thieves cannot get there. <laughs> They cannot cut your crown of life away. Your crown of righteousness. Oh, nothing can tamper with it. It's an inheritance incorruptible. Undefined. That faded not away. I love the way the Bible says it is reserved. Guaranteed reservation. Glory be to God. Those are the benefits. I'm, 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 I'm wrapping up now. Second Timothy chapter 4, 7 to 8 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. You know, God has a course for each one. Don't get out of your course to another person's course. He says, I finished my course. That's why he said, my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And that is the benefit. God has reserved for you a crown. A crown of righteousness. And if you read Revelation 2.10, Revelation 2.10, it says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. In this one head, crown of righteousness, Amen. crown of life, Amen. incorruptible crown. Amen. I read last night about five different crowns. How would they get there? God knows. <laughs> I don't know how they will get there. I don't care how they will get there, but I want a crown of righteousness. You want a crown of righteousness. You want a crown of life. And, and I'm wrapping up now. Revelation 21, 24 says, And God shall wipe away all tears. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. <laughs> Exciting, streets of gold. No more pain. You are going through pain now? It has an expiry date. <laughs> no more sorrow. No more debts. Young people, Brahmak has to encourage you, go to bed at 11, no more night there. <laughs> students, students, you are dealing with calculus and algebra. No more algebra there. No more calculus. No more uh, parents. Uh, I need home office. Uh, and what is home office? In heaven. God has an office. Say, I go to prepare for you a place. And when I go to prepare for you a place, I will come again. That where I am, there you may be also. There are people who have gone on before. Don't you know them? You know them. They are clouds of witnesses. As we run that race, they are, I look at them at the stadium. They are saying, keep on going. Brother Fungal Mangere, keep on going. Please, <laughs> Fungal, keep on going. Keep on going. Don't stop. Oh, may God help us. May God help us to cross the finish line. May God strengthen us. Those who have gone, come back. Because we are going to run this race to the finish line. God bless you as you pray.
Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. Help us to run this race to the end. Oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, help every one of us as we lay our all on the altar. Lord God, answer every prayer. Save souls, sanctify, baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Encourage every soul. Revive us, O oh Lord, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.